right church welcome welcome river of life we thank you that you're joining us we know you're gonna be blessed with today's message but before we jump into that just wanted to give you a few things with announcements okay the first of which is our Sunday school. We hope and pray that your kids would be blessed. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and log on to YouTube and look up River of Life Church. And on there we have on our playlist section some Sunday school lessons for your little ones. So it's gonna be posted every Sunday at 11. It's ready in there to bless your kids. Youth, we love getting together with you. We've been meeting on our Instagram account. If you haven't joined already, it's rolconnect.youth. It's an awesome opportunity to get together with the youth. Even if you're not a youth, you could join us. And we've been having awesome um, opportunities of our young ones rising up and giving us some awesome, awesome messages. So join us Thursdays at 7. Uh, home fellowship groups. We've been meeting every other Friday. We are super excited about that. We've been going together um, on our Zoom conference. If you haven't been in touch, go ahead and get in touch with your um, Bible study leader. And if you don't have a leader, you want to be a part of it though, go ahead and drop a comment down below and we'll try to give you the information. We meet every other Friday at 7.30. Men, we got exciting news. We're hoping to do a discipleship for you. That is right, a discipleship. We are committed to social distancing, so it will be on Zoom. We're gonna have more information to come. But we just hope that right now, before we get started with our message, that you be blessed. Um, that you would participate in any and all activities that we're giving you. And for now, until next time, we love you and be blessed. Saints, it is that beautiful time. It's time to bless the Lord. There are three ways that you could go ahead and partner with us. The first of which is Cash App. You could do that at R-O-L-C-C-S-G-V. The second one is Zelle. And you could do that at R-O-L-C-C-S-G-V at yahoo.com. And then the third way is Venmo. And it's going to be at River of Life Christian Church. Amen, guys. We hope that you would just be blessed by this ministry. And in doing so, that you would go ahead and just partner with us. And be a part of what God's doing through this. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. It is so good to have with, uh, you with us tonight. I'm really looking forward to the message. Um, I just want to let you know really quick first. Uh, that this message God really spoke to my heart about and uh, it's going to be a two-part message. The first part is the foundation that needs to be laid for this coming Sunday's message. So today, Wednesday night, I pray that you just come with a heart that is open and eager to what it is that the Lord would speak to us and give us direction in and about. I love the fact that God is such a personal and intimate God that He speaks to us in so many different ways. He um, touches us in many ways. There's people that really have uh, uh, a sense of when God touches them to be able to uh, cry and just allow God to speak to them and, and minister that way. Others, they might experience a touch where they begin to feel uh, a great sense of joy and laughter. But the wonderful thing about God is that He knows each and every one of us so personal and intimate. And I think what we're going to deal with tonight is um, what God has dealt with my heart about uh, since the beginning of this year. And I think that it's really important that I walk in sensiti uh, sensitivity listening to what it is that God would say. I titled this message uh, this evening, Are You Listening to God? Are You Listening to God? And our text is going to be in Psalms chapter 81, uh, verses 11 through 14. And as you notice, we're, we're out in the backyard today. And um, so what I need you to do is I need you to get uh, your Bibles, um, electrical devices, your iPads, your iPhones, whatever it is. Uh, that you uh, have your Bible app on and get ready to open it up because uh, that's going to be the way that you're going to be following tonight. Now, I started by saying how God is personal and intimate and speaks to every one of us in different ways. And I love what the Psalms represent. Prior to the Psalms being introduced, uh, it was... Uh, just the, the word that would come and uh, the way that God would speak to his 
people was through his prophets, uh, through the messenger, whoever it might have been. But then the Psalms come on the scene and the Psalms are literally the songs that were created that were introduced into the church and the songs were sung by the psalmist who was touched by God and the word that God would give him. In this uh, case right here, we see that David begins to uh, bring forth a, a, a song or the psalm in chapter 81. And starting at verse 11, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and pick it up from there. And, and you have to notice who it is that the Lord is speaking to. You know, different times uh, and different uh, passages of Scripture, we see that God speaks, whether it's uh, to His children or even to the enemy or whoever it might have been that was coming against uh, the children of Israel. There was a word that was uh, very distinct and precise. And here we see that in Psalms 81, the Lord is speaking to his children. So let's start at verse number 11 of chapter 81. The word says, But my people would not heed my voice. And Israel would have none of me. Now we stop right there and we see immediately at, at verse number 11 that the Lord is bringing a word from the psalmist to his people. And basically Israel is at a place of where their ears have grown deaf to what it is that God is trying to say. In fact, the word says right here that Israel would have nothing or none of me, none of God. Verse number 12 says, So I gave them over to their own stubborn hearts to walk in their own counsel. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. Verse number 14 says, I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. Now, church, you know, you stop and you think, and um, I think that every single one of us can relate to uh, where it is that Israel is at during this time. There are times of plenty uh, when it comes to our relationship with God, and I mean times of plenty of where we are in one mind and one accord with God's Spirit. Um, it seems like our desire to serve Him and our um, emotions are held in check to where, you know, we're not being swayed, but we're staying on the path that He's called us to. But then like here in Psalms 81, we see how Israel had started to go astray. And I said that every one of us have maybe encountered that in our lives where we have gone astray from God, where the things of this world have been so enticing to us that we followed the desires of our heart. And sometimes the desires of our heart are so great and desire to do the things of God, but then there are times when there is a coldness that comes about us and it seems like we stray. This is exactly where Israel was at during this time. I want to ask you this question. Have you ever been talking to someone and you're just maybe pouring out your heart? Um, maybe even husbands and wives. Wives, have you ever been uh, maybe sharing a thought with your husband and your husband might be looking at you, but he really isn't tuned in to what it is that you're saying? See, right now is a good time for all you ladies to say amen, pastor, because you know what I'm talking about. Or have you ever told your children, you know, that it is that you want them to do something and maybe they're uh, saving the world on their video game or whatever it might be and you're telling them to do something and they say that they're listening, but they truly aren't. It's frustrating when you are sending a message and you're trying to uh, get a word across something that's of importance, 
but it doesn't seem like anybody's listening. Let me take it a step even further. How about us when God is speaking to us? I think it's really important that right now, especially in the time and the day that we're living in, where truthfully the only certainty is God and His grace and His mercy and His saving power is what is stable, secure, and steady. I say this constantly, from one minute to the next, events are changing literally throughout the world. And I believe that it's of the utmost importance that right now the body of Christ recognize what it is that God is trying to say. And in God trying to say something, it's because He desires to do something. And if God desires to do something, He desires to use the body of Christ. And if He desires to use the body of Christ, then He desires to use you. He desires to use me. But the problem is, is that we need to be at a place of where we are listening to God. Now remember I said that this message tonight is laying the foundation for the message that I will be bringing this coming Sunday morning. So set yourself up, get yourself uh, at a place of where you understand what it is that God is trying to do at this time. You know, right now I know that so many of our children, in fact all of them, uh, are having to uh, go on the computer and they're having to uh, have their classes scheduled online. And um, it's causing us as parents to be able or to be at a place of where we're monitoring our children. Because I know that I don't want any of my kids to fall behind. And they're right now given an opportunity to be able to receive the uh, lessons online. And the teacher is, is coming through Zoom or whatever uh, um, app they have. But it's really important that we as parents are there helping and directing our children. I know that when I said when we don't listen that it's very frustrating. And I know that all of us have the greatest children that ever have lived since the creation and since the beginning of time. But right now you are experiencing maybe just a little of what it is that the teachers have experienced when you ask your children or you're talking to them and maybe they're not listening. You know what your teachers are going through now when they're trying to bring a message or trying to bring the lesson when our kids aren't listening. It's very frustrating. And now with us having to be right there with our kids, we could see just how frustrating their job truly is. We need to take our hats off to our teachers that are out there because they are so, uh, my gosh, they are so unappreciated. And it almost seems like so many times that they get the, the brunt of our anger because of what our children supposedly don't learn or you know, the problems that have come about through that. But back to the Word of God, and it's just frustrating when you're trying to convey something to someone and they're just not listening. We see here that the Word of God speaks. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 12, it says this, They worshipped idols, though the Lord had said, you shall not do this. So God gave them specific orders. He gave them direction. He was speaking to them through the prophets. He was speaking to uh, them through the, the, the ministers of the word of God. And he says, you know what? I don't want you to have any idols. I don't want you to have anything above or before me. And the Word of God says in verse number 12 that they did not listen. 
they did not hear or they chose not to hear what it was that God was saying. Didn't mean that they were deaf physically, but they became deaf spiritually. And that's a dangerous place for us to be at church, where we are deaf spiritually. Let me say this to you. What the children of Israel did willingly and with their full heart was this. They chose to follow their own way. Now, I'm the type of person that w loves to delve into words a little more deeper to get maybe the, the, the synonyms behind it or the definition behind it or words that really uh, uh, portray the main word that's trying to come across. And I looked up the word choose. And that word means this, to select freely. So they chose what it was that they wanted to listen or hear from God freely, just like you and I today. We make the choice every single day we choose what it is that we desire to do, not to do. We choose the words to say or not to say. Have you ever been at that place where you wish that you could just take the word back that, that just came from your, your mouth and maybe your husband or wife or your children and you so regret saying it, but at that time, at that heat of the moment, that word you chose to bring it out. Why? because we chose willingly to say it. Now, during this time of when the Lord is speaking to Israel, we see that they chose freely not to listen to what it was that God had said to them. I'd said this before, we need to be very careful on the choices that we make. The choices in life, where we go, where we don't go. The words we speak, the words we say, the words we uh, uh, share with one another, the choice is ours and we make them freely, church. Because of their choices, the Assyrian army was able to bring destruction against the children of Israel. The enemy prevailed over God's chosen. Can I ask you this question? We are so good at saying, how many of you know this, that I'm the head, not the tail, that I'm above and not beneath, that, you know, I'm this and I'm that, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm a child of the king. And that's right, you are, and we are above and we're not beneath. But the fact is, is that the choices we make either will allow us to be victorious or to experience the stinging taste of defeat. See, God desperately wanted the children of Israel to listen to him. God desperately wanted that for his kids. He wanted to be at a place of where he could speak and that they would act and that they would uh, do it in accordance with what his will and desire was for that individual. But unfortunately, their ears drew cold to the Spirit of God. Now, I think it's really important that there's been people uh, who have come to me and say, Pastor, how is it that God speaks to you. And remember when we started off, I said that God speaks to us in, in so many different ways. He, he does or, or touches uh, us in so many uh, uh, unexpected ways, I could even say. You know, the, the, the first thing how God speaks to us is, you know, we have to look through His people. See, God communicates 
to his people by the Word of God. And I think that's really important that we understand that. We understand that God uses men and women of God, the prophets of old, your pastors, evangelists. He uses those men and women to bring forth a word and speak to your heart. We also know that God speaks to us through the Spirit of God. How His Spirit is so gentle and knows how to speak to every single one of us. You know, see, here in the Word of God, I, I wanted to show you something. That God spoke to the saints of old directly. And in fact, God spoke directly to Abraham in, in such a clear and decisive way. We know that God had called uh, Abraham to a work. And he says, you know what, I've called you to separate yourself. And the reason why God had called him to separate himself and go the direction that he wanted him to go was because of the plan and the purpose, the blessing and the destiny that God had for his life. To listen to the voice of God. I think it's really important that we, the body of Christ, if we're not sure, if we're not certain of what it is that God's trying to say or what he's trying to do, you know, that's what our pastors are there for. That's what our leaders are there for. That's what the body of Christ is there for. When someone can find a, a confidant that they're able to share what it is that God spoke to them about and get some direction. Not too long ago, I had received several calls because of during this uh, pandemic, there was uh, uh, an individual that had said a few words and it was uh, pretty doom and gloom. And uh, I had received actually quite, quite a few calls and they were asking me about it. What did I think about it? And I said to them, you know, one of the things that we always need to do is go to the Word of God to weigh Scripture out against what it is that we've heard or what it is that someone wants to do. And when we were able to do it, to go to the Word of God, there was so much clarity that came from that to the individuals that were asking. And it wasn't that God gave me a, a divine revelation. It was because of what we simply know what to do when we're seeking answers, when God has spoken, we go to His Word to find the direction that He has for each and every one of us. And being able to share that, it brought comfort and clarity to these individuals. So we see that when God was calling Abraham, He spoke directly to him and said, Abraham, this is what I want you to do. I want you to separate yourself. I want you to go this way. I want you to follow my plan, my purpose, my destiny for your life. We also see, and a couple of weeks back, we dealt with this, uh, uh, Saul on the road to Damascus, how it was that God spoke directly to him. Do you see the pattern that we're setting from uh, our, our, our uh, resurrection services and even Palm Sunday to where we are now, our vision series, how we're talking about what it is that God has for us in 2020? God is going to speak directly into our hearts. It's not that God isn't speaking. The question is, are we listening? We found that in Acts chapter 9, verse 4. I had said that God speaks through his prophets. The Bible talks about in uh, Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. God, God told uh, Jonah, Go to that great city Nineveh and preach against it because of its wickedness. There's been times where God has asked me to do something. And I will be honest with you, church, because I don't like what God has said, I've tuned it out. 
and that's bad on me. See, I'm not telling you something that I haven't lived or I haven't dealt with and that I haven't experienced the sting of not listening to God. Oh, if I had only listened to God about so many things in my life, it would have saved me a lot of hurt. But God used that for His glory. I think the more that we begin to tune our ears towards God, the less hurt and heartache we'll experience. He didn't want to bring that word to Nineveh. He didn't want to tell him that God's going to bring judgment on your city because of your great wickedness. Let's break that down to a personal level. Forget the city. Forget the region. Make it personal. How about us right now? What is it that this word is saying to us and how God is trying to speak to our hearts even right now? I know that we can make so many excuses for why we don't. I haven't changed. I haven't uh, dealt with this because, and maybe rightfully so, but what I've experienced over the years is that God will not ask something of you that he will not replace with greater and better. That's the God that we serve, church. That is the God that we serve. We see that God uses angels to speak. And again, when we were just coming through our resurrection uh, time of the year, in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, the Word of God talks about how the Lord used Gabriel to speak to Mary, to let her know that she was going to give birth to a son. How beautiful is that? Gabriel, the messenger. Can you imagine if Mary didn't listen to the word that the angel came and brought to her? There would have been a place of where so much would have been lost. The word of God says that blessed are you among women. Why is that? She was blessed because she just tuned to what it is that God was speaking to her about using this beautiful angelic being. And some of you might be out there saying, well, only if God used this angelic being to speak to me. You see, we always have a way of putting conditions on what it is that we choose to believe or that we choose not to believe. Remember, choosing freely will set the path for either victory or destruction in your life. I look at that word communicate. And that word basically means this, to convey knowledge of or information or making known. That's a wonderful definition. To convey or to bring knowledge or an understanding, information about what it is that I'm doing or not doing. Are you listening to the Spirit of God? Are you listening to what it is that God's trying to say to you? So we see that God uses different forms to speak to us. Now, there are three listeners that I want to share with you very quickly tonight. We fall in the category of one of these three. So I hope that right now you say, okay, Lord, Show me, not my brother, not my sister, not my mother, not my cousin, not that person over there. Show me right now, God, what type of listener I am. But most importantly, what type of listener do you want me to be? Now, the first listener that there is, is the passive listener. See, the passive listener 
does not come to church or to a Bible study and say, Lord, what is it that you have for me? See, the passive listener comes maybe into a, a church service or to a Bible study and never gives a second thought on what it is that God is trying to say through the teacher or the preacher. Maybe they just feel that they're getting that religious act out of the way. Maybe they come into church and uh, you know they're there on their, their phone or their iPad or wherever it is and you know they're checking the scores for whatever game that's out there or you know they're out there and they're uh, playing their you know little favorite game that's on there or whatever it might be. God's speaking every time we gather together God is saying something and one person can be sitting right here the next person to the side of them and those two people receive absolutely totally different messages that God is trying to speak one hand the individual that's here they're on their phone they're on Facebook they're on Instagram they're doing this they're talking there ah, not even hearing what it is that God's trying to say and on the other hand there's someone there that God is trying to speak to that God is trying to give direction that God is trying to show that God is trying to lead that God is trying to help to get out of the situation that they're in. The passive listener will basically come in and say, I might hear something good, I might not, but whatever, I'm just gonna go about me. Remember I said before, to choose means that we freely make that or go in the direction that we desire to go in you freely choose how you will listen the passive listener the second listener is this is the selective listener the word select means to pick or choose I like that. I like what you're saying right there, Pastor. That's perfect because, you know, that gives me the right to feel my anger or my uh, disappointment in someone. Or, you know what, Pastor, I like that because you are preaching to my husband and so on and so forth. Or, you know what, uh, how many of you ever been in a service where you hear or feel someone kind of like give you that elbow to the side because they're saying that's for you? The selective listener, the one that selects, selects or picks or chooses. The selective listener listens to only what she or he wants to hear. See, as Christians, church, we cannot pick and choose what we like and don't like in Scripture. We must obey all of God's teachings. In 2 John 1 9, the Word of God says this, whoever transgress or whoever transgresses and does not abide in my doctrine or the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He does not abide in the doctrine of Christ but has both the Father and the Son. If you Listen, if he who abides, that means if you make the choice of saying, you know what, I accept this. If you make the choice of saying, nah, I don't accept this. Then the foundation's been laid. The fo foundation has been laid for you and you will see what you will reap from that. And the last listener tonight is this, the aggressive listener. I like this. That word aggressive means this, a combative readiness. So when you are an aggressive listener, you are combat ready. 
Church, we are the army of God, and we have been given marching orders. And sometimes God's going to call you to go to that place that you do not want to go to. There's going to be times where God asks you to give this to me because it's not beneficial for you. There's going to be times where God says, the relationship that you're, wrong, that you're in right now is not right. Church, let me just say this. The lives that we live and the choices that we make, we will reap a harvest of either blessing or curse. That's not my word. That's what the word of God says. This is not a popular message, but let me just say this. It's setting the foundation for what God will be asking us on Sunday. I'm so looking forward to this because when there is a people that will listen, something powerful will take place. Something powerful in your life. Something powerful in the relationships that you're involved in. Something powerful between you, husband and wife. Something powerful is about to happen. The foundation is being laid now. Church, I hope and I pray that this is not something that will happen. But right now, people, people are at a place of where they have nowhere to go and they don't have anything to do. So they're forced at a place of where they're at right now. But as soon as the doors open, and they will, and as soon as the places are open again, and they will be, the choices that you make now are going to determine. Are you listening to God? Are you hearing what he's saying to you? Are you cold in your spirit? Are you at a place of where I don't care? Are you at a place only because of where we are right now? And when the doors open, we're going out? Think about it. Think about what God is trying to say to you today. Whatever it is that he's speaking, however it is he's speaking to you. Maybe you're here even tonight and you're saying, man, God speak to me somehow, some way. And maybe he's used this message to say, today's the day where you get it right. Today's the day where you listen to what my spirit is saying to you. Today's the day, the first day of such a wonderful beginning of what God wants to do in your life. I know that I'm, in the past I was talking a lot to those that maybe don't know Christ, but I'm talking to Christians today. I'm talking to you out there. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to us. Let's get our place. Let's find what it is that God is saying. Let's listen to what the Spirit of God is saying to you and to me because I want you to know tonight the plan and the purpose that he has for you. Some of you have been prophesied over as a young child and God said to you, thus saith the Lord, God spoke. You cannot run from the call of God, my friend. You cannot hide from the voice of God. Some of you maybe that were raised in church as kids. Come back. Come back to what it is that God wants to speak to you. Maybe some of you are in church, but you're really not in church. You know what it is that God is saying. Listen and act. Choose today. 
the Word of God says in ending that He stands at the door of our heart and He knocks. Will you let Him in today to remove the clutter, the calamity that's in your life? Choose to listen to God as He speaks to you today. Church, I love you. I thank you so much. The word that I bring, I bring from my heart because of what it is that God wants to do. Are you ready? Are you ready for the blessing that God has for you today? Listen to what he says. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you again. Church, thank you so much for joining us. I pray that message just spoke to your heart. I pray that God would have used it just to fill you up, encourage you, challenge you, whatever it is that he had to do. I just pray it did it with this message. Uh, I just want to remind you to go ahead and hit the like button down below, the subscribe button, and the notification button so that you're informed as to when we upload our videos. We just pray that you would be blessed. Um, hit us down below with a comment. Let us know that what God spoke to your heart about. Give us some emojis like some praise hands and praying hands, whatever it is. We'd love to hear feedback even though we can't gather together doesn't mean that we have to be separate men um, so just make sure you hit all the buttons down below be blessed and until we meet again we love you take care